What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be talking about promoting a CPA max bounty offer using Facebook ads. So this is going to be a very very cool video. A lot of interesting things are going to be happening. And so even if you know about this concept, even if you have seen similar videos, make sure you stick until the end. You don't miss anything because things have changed greatly over the past several months and years. And so you definitely want to make sure you watch this video. All right, so when it comes to Facebook ads, the most important thing really is picking the right offer. Now, the thing about CPA marketing is that, you know, you have a lot of these offers that pay a very low payout. You have $2.50, $5, you know, $4, $3, uh, these surveys, email submits, zip submits, and you really cannot promote them on Facebook ads, right? They're not really meant for Facebook ads. On Facebook ads, you really have to promote high quality, real, legit offers, okay? And when you're browsing around your max bounty or if you're using another uh, CPA network, really, what I like to start out, I go to my search campaigns and I click on search options. And then what I like, the category I really like is e-commerce, right? So we can look at some e-commerce offers here and a lot of them are physical offers, right? They're a lot easier to promote on Facebook than a lot of these sweepstakes, surveys, things like that, offers that make crazy claims. So e-commerce is a good category. Another good category is education. A lot of people don't even look into that category. I know a lot of people didn't even know that category existed. But that's a really, really good category. And there's some really high quality offers there. And so for this example, we're going to be promoting the Treehouse app. This is the Learn to Code app. And this is basically learn to code, gain a new skill, get a new job, whatever you go, will get you there. Try the Treehouse, seven day free trial now. And so you have different payouts, right? If they sign up for the free trial, you get 240 per lead. If they sign up for any of these kind of paid trials, you get a percentage of the sale. And the reason I wanna go with this offer is that, well, first of all, they allow Facebook, so you can advertise on Facebook, no problem. And second of all, it's a legit offer, right? It's a high quality offer. This is a, a high quality service. And so, you know, if you open the landing page and you always want to open the landing page just to get an idea of what the offer is about, right? They're saying 300 courses, 278 workshops, 23 topics, 50,000 current students, right? So it's a real, you know, it's a real product, right? Like if, if I wanted to learn how to code, I would probably sign up and take one of their classes and workshops and things like that. So this is a legit offer. And if it's a legit offer, you know, it's an offer you can recommend to somebody, then you can probably, you know, promote it on Facebook and you should have no problems doing it. Now, the thing about Facebook is there are a couple of things you have to understand. On Facebook, you cannot really direct link. Direct linking is not allowed. You cannot, you know, you cannot create an ad and, and link to an affiliate offer. If this was your own company, right, Treehouse is your own company and you represent that company and you have a page for that company, yeah, you can advertise it. But you cannot advertise an affiliate product with direct linking. Facebook doesn't like it. So there are primarily two ways of advertising on Facebook, okay? The first way is basically creating a little mini website and creating something called a commercial content, right? So it would work something like this. You have a visitor, they go to Facebook, they're scrolling through their news feed. They stumble upon a Facebook ad. Uh, there's, you know, there's an ad that links to a website. The website has an article of top 10 best mattresses. And typically this would link directly. I mean, you could link it to a website or you could link it directly to this article, right? And one of the, one of the, you know, one of the, I have top 10 best mattresses here, but this could be any kind of article, right? It could be, you know, top 10 best programming schools top 10 best tables, top 10 best chairs for uh, computer programmers, right? Top 10 best uh, smartphones, whatever it is. And then one of the, you know, one of the articles, you're going to have an affiliate link. And that's absolutely fine, right? You're basically, you know, you ha you're building a brand. The website is a brand. You have maybe it's a review website or some kind of a mattress website or a coding website, or you could, you could have it about that specific topic. It could be in general, something like the wire cutter, right? Which is a very, very popular review website. So it doesn't matter. The point is you're bringing value, right? You're, you're creating value. And so Facebook is not going to have a problem with it because you're advertising a piece of content. Now, what you do on that content is up to you. Obviously, if you're going to have 20,000 affiliate links, you know, Facebook might have a problem with that, right? Because 
there's not going to be a lot of value there but generally speaking if you are just you know you have a couple of affiliate links that are basically talking about you know uh, like maybe you have top 10 best mattresses and you have maybe 10 affiliate links that's absolutely fine now the second way you can advertise on facebook is by using a so-called email funnel right in this case you have facebook uh, they're scrolling down they see a facebook ad they stumble upon a website and it's about top 10 mattresses or something else doesn't matter and then once they go on the website they're basically they have kind of an email opt-in right and they sign up maybe they they want to get some discounts maybe uh, you have top five items and they you know in order to see the top 10 items they need to sign up and then you you basically give them some value first email you give them value second email you give them value and then you pitch right so this is the email funnel in this example so you can do it both ways you know i mean you could do it either way if you want uh this is a nice way right here capturing email is a really solid way and so for the purpose of this tutorial we're going to be talking about the first way here and so now that you know how it works we can kind of continue with the tutorial okay and so the next thing you want to do is you want to create the ad right we're not gonna we're not gonna jump into the facebook ads manager we're gonna do that in a little bit but we already know that in order to create a facebook ad you need a creative right so what i like to do i like to use a tool called canva i basically click create a design i go and create a facebook ad and basically uh you're you're given a lot of templates right so you can use some of these templates to create your ad right and what i did is i basically googled for a piece of code right and i basically got this image and i set it as a background right so i basically uploaded this image put it inside on the canvas right clicked it and then basically i can detach it from a background and i can also replace the background so that makes it a nice background and then so i basically use this template and then i basically replaced now it's probably not the best kind of ad there's so many kind of cool ads you can create uh one really interesting ones that i learned like when it comes to coding is that you can basically say something like you know learn to understand this gibberish you know that that kind of angle right there's a lot of interesting ads all you have to go into google and basically is just google for learn how to code learn to code and you're going to be given different ads kind of different creatives and so you can you can you know you can basically use some of these ideas there's a piece of code that basically is you know telling you these things here's another piece of code and so you can basically find kind of clip art images that you can use in your creative okay so once you do that you basically click download save it on your hard drive and now you can basically go into facebook and now the fun part begins you can basically create the piece of content uh the, the, the actual ad campaign using your piece of content here and actually start running these ads okay so i'm, I'm in my ads manager we're gonna go from the beginning we're gonna go through the entire process i'm gonna show you everything i basically cr click create here and then it's loading creation here and we're gonna create the entire entire structure together so the campaign name i'm just gonna call it c1 ad set name i'm gonna call it ads1 add one just to keep it simple we're gonna save this to draft and then we're gonna start moving so when we save it to draft it basically creates a, like a skeleton structure right we have a campaign we have the ad set and we have an ad here right the first thing you want to do is to modify the ad set the ad set is where the targeting the demographics the interest all the kind of the juicy things happen right and when you're modifying you're going to see a lot of kind of what's going on uh with your audience definition okay so what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down we're going to set our daily budget okay i'm going to start with a daily budget of ten dollars since we're just testing i recommend anywhere from like five to ten dollars or something like that we want to start it the following day okay the following day at midnight okay local account time because if you start it right now so let's say it's uh, it's actually 11 p.m where i'm now and that means it's only going to run for an hour assuming it gets approved it's probably not going to get approved within an hour so let's say you know maybe it was 2 p.m let's say it was 2 p.m where you were you were doing this and in an hour the ad was approved and so you only had like seven eight hours for the ad to run so it would have probably spent all this money in half the time and so that is why i kind of like to start the next day at 12 a.m that's especially important once the but your budget is going to be like higher and higher so like 50 dollars 100 dollars uh it's definitely important for that next we scroll down now we want to put united states here 
uh, this campaign is is for United States, right? Even if it wasn't for United States, I always like to start with United States first because that's a very good market. So we put United States here. We choose country and region. And so we have that. Now our potential reaches 230 million people. Okay, uh, to, it, that, of the, you know, it's all the people, all the kind of the users that are online. And that's how it works, okay? So what we want is people living in or recently in this location. We want to make sure we, put, we pick people living in this location. Because I don't really want to target tourists uh, because it's a different demographic. I just want to target people living in the United States. We scroll down age range, right? I like to target 25 plus. That's kind of my thing. You can, you can target kind of, you can keep it wide open if you like. I just like to target 25 plus. And the reason for that is because 18 to 24, 18, yeah, 18 to 24, 18 to 25, they don't really have a lot of money. They're in college. Uh, they're kind of, um, you know, just kind of, they're learning, they're studying, or they're just getting, uh, starting their career. So they don't have a lot of money to spend. Genders, we're going to keep this wide open because we don't really know, uh, you know, who's going to convert better. We cannot really guess. Now we're in, the, in our demographics, right? So here we can start playing with interest, right? So we can put something like programming, right? And see what happens. So we have computer programming. If you put that in there, right? We have 8.2 million people. That's really good. Ideally, we want the ad set to be, I like to have it from one to five million. It's better to have it a little bit above, uh, you know, five million than below one million. And the reason for that is you don't want to make it too narrow that you're just going to run through the ad set very, very quickly once you start kind of looking at uh, different prospective buyers. And you don't want to make it too wide because uh, typically Facebook is going to have trouble finding your users. You want, to, you want to give Facebook kind of a narrow feel for it. And we're going to narrow this down by using something called manual placements. And so with Facebook, there's a lot of areas where you can place the ad. You, can, you have Facebook itself, you have the audience network, you have the messenger, Instagram. When I'm starting out, when I'm testing something, I only like to see the ad. I only like to place my ad on the Facebook newsfeed, okay? So we're going to deselect everything. And, you know, you can have another campaign for Instagram ads, et cetera, et cetera. That's absolutely fine. You can test some of these placements later on. I just like to start with the Facebook newsfeed. We're going to deselect all of this. So that we have Facebook newsfeed. There's a, a couple of other things you have to deselect. Deselect stories, in stream, search. There's also marketplace, in article. And we're going to deselect that. And we, we've deselected everything. And now we're down to 4.6 million. So now we're down uh, below. We're, we're under 5 million, which is kind of what I like. Uh, let's take a look. We have computer programming, web development, so all of these are interests that you can potentially, uh, you can potentially target, right? There's so many ways that you can really work with it, and I'm gonna show you a couple of other methods, right? And so what I like to do is, once I have my ad set done, right? This is what I like. Once I have 4.6 million people, the ad set is complete. I have my daily budget. I have everything like that. I like to rename this ad set to the name of the interest. Okay, so the interest here is computer programming. And so that's what I like to call the ad set so that I know, you know, because, you know, the ads, you know, the a, a very important thing when it comes to Facebook ads is you typically want to have one interest per ad set. And the reason for that is you're going to have data back. And basically, if you are, you know, doing some kind of conversion optimization, you're doing like Facebook, you're pixeling your, uh, your traffic and all that. So it's just good practice, right? Facebook is going to tell you which ad set is converting, right? And so if you just call it, if all of your ad set are just, you know, if you have a lot of interest in one ad set, you're not going to know which basically, uh, which interest are your conversions coming from. So this is very good practice. Just, I like to always have one interest per ad set. So, you know, for, th for this, we have one interest, okay? Now, if these interests are relatively small, so this interest is 59 million, so it's a big interest, then I keep it as one interest. If it's a small interest, if it's like a couple of million and I'm going to have a, a reach of less than a million, then I'll just bump, uh, I'll just basically combine a couple of interests together. Okay, but for this example, this is a huge interest. We're going to keep it uh, one per, per the ad set. And so the next thing you want to do is actually go to the ad. Okay, we basically scroll down. 
And this is where we actually configure the creative, right? And so before you do that, you need to have a Facebook page. I already have a couple of Facebook pages. And so I'm not going to go ahead and create a new Facebook page for this campaign. If you're promoting, uh, you know, programming, teaching people how to code, then I would create like another page and call it like, you know, uh, how to code or learn to code or something like that, something specific. Because when Facebook is going to be showing your ad, it's going to be basically it's going to it's going to come from that page so you don't want to have a generic page you don't have you don't want to have a page that's not really relevant or anything like that so i have a couple of pages here from other projects i'm not going to create a brand new page here but um you know in your case you should definitely do it because it's just going to it's 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 going to convert a lot better and so we have our page we scroll down we have the ad setup we're going to be using a single image or video we're going to scroll down. And so what you what you want to do is you can add an image, add a video. We're going to be doing an image. And so when I click on the add to image, I have different images. These are from uh, other past campaigns. I already uploaded this learn to code uh, in 10 days kind of image or in 30 days that we created. We're going to be basically, uh, we, can, we can crop it. We can actually, we don't want to crop it. We can continue. And basically, it's going to upload the image. And this is what what it looks like. And so we have the primary text. Primary text is the text that appears before the ad. And this is what people start reading right away. And a headline appears here. And then we have another description, which is optional. It appears below the headline. And so we have the display URL. We have the headline description and all of that. And so that is why when I talked about creating, um, you know, the whole flow is that you kind of, it, it's very helpful to create a little mini website. It's not going to cost you a lot of money, but it's definitely going to improve the, you know, your increase your chances of the ad being approved as well as basically, you know, it's going to look a lot more professional. So when you create the ad, your display URL is going to be for the ad and you don't need a crazy website. I have here a simple website about cameras. So it has like 10 articles, I believe, or even even less. Right. And so I have a, I have a couple of articles. Right. So, for instance, I have best Canon cameras with flip screen. You can have a similar website about, you know, best, uh, you know, coding classes, best online classes, online schools for coding. And so you can have that kind of comparison like I have here. And this could be an affiliate link. Very, very simple. It's not a lot of work and looks a lot more professional. So you need the primary text. I always recommend people to create primary text. And so what you want to do is basically you just want to say something like, um, you know, like, you want to think of an angle. What is the angle? Why would somebody want to learn how to code? And, you know, typically it would be, it'd be like something like um, interested in, in a new challenge. Something like that. Uh, learn, uh, long, learn coding or something. Let's see. Learn coding with our 30-day uh, challenge or something in 30 days. In, 30 day, in just 30 days. And, you know, and get a and change your career and change your life or something like that you know when you are writing this when you're writing the actual text you need to be thinking about the angle one angle is is to make more money right programmers developers they make a lot more money uh, in the united states which is where the campaign is running but also in europe as well and so in the united states one of the biggest kind of motivations is to uh, to to make more money right coding is a big one another one is a change problem solving, right? You need to think about, about an angle, right? Money is a, not, is, is a good angle. Interested in a new challenge. Learn, learn, learn how to learn to code. Learn how to code in just 30 days and change your life and make more money or something like that. So we have a headline now. We have a headline, something like that. And this is where the, the main kind of uh, benefit, right? Learn to code in 30 days. I'm just making it up. I don't know if, this, if that's what they're promising on the site. I'm just kind of going with it. You have to basically visit the site and, you know, whichever campaign you're running and figure out where, uh, what's their angle, what they're doing. And then you can have a little bit of a description here uh, if you'd like. Uh, you can, you, this is optional, so I'm not going to really bother with it. Then we have the website, right? And for this website, you know, obviously if you have a website, I have a website here. Uh, I can input that there, right? I'm just going to put... You know, I, I would never put a direct, direct max bounty link. It's just a very good way to kind of uh, have problems with the Facebook accounts. We can, I'm just going to put yahoo.com just for the hell of it, uh, just, just, just to put something in there. Um, call to action, learn more. We're going to do that because they're learning how to code. 
we don't really need to do anything. You can have a Facebook pixel. Yeah, I have another video about setting up a Facebook pixel. You can do that, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep it simple because it's going to take a, lo a long time. And that is all we have to do, right, for this ad set. Now, here's a little bit of an advanced tip. Uh, what I like to do is basically when I'm creating campaign, right, um, I can never know which ad set, which interest is going to convert. So right now I only have one interest. And maybe, you know, there's not a lot of people who are interested in this kind of service in that interest. So what I like to do is I basically like to duplicate it four more times. That way I will have five ad sets and five interests. So in other words, I'm going to have five chances to kind of find people that are interested in kind of buying what I'm selling. Because, you know, you can have one, one ad set might not, one interest might not be the right one. And so... Now that we duplicated, basically duplicated all the ads as well. So what you need to do is you basically need to go through each of these ad sets. And it's very, very simple. I'm going to show you how it works. You basically scroll down. You're going to keep everything the same. All you need to do is click on suggestions and just pick the next one. We're going to pick web development because that's also coding, right? It's a type of discipline. Now we have web development. We're going to copy and paste this. We're going to scroll up and basically modify the name of this ad set so that we know what, what this ad set represents. Because when you are tracking the conversions on your max bounty, ClickBank, anywhere else, you're going to be getting back the ad sets that are converting. And if they have a lot of interest, right, you won't know which interest is actually working. So now we have web development, we have this computer programming, and the same thing you have to do for the rest of these three ad sets. I'm not going to do that because it's very repetitive but you understand what I'm talking about. And so this web development, actually our other ad set that had like, uh, I believe it had a little bit under 5 million, 4.6 million, right? This ad set actually has, uh, it has, uh, I think it's like a little bit under 2 million. Like if we click this here, it has 1.2 million. That is perfect. Like I said before, I like to keep my ad sets well, between one and 5 million uh, reach of people. And, and, and so it's basically showing you with your current daily budget, how much, you know, how much you're going to be reaching out of the total audience for that ad set. So you have a lot of room to run and it's still fairly specific that you should be able to find bars very, very quickly. And so you need to modify the rest of these three ad sets. So you basically scroll down and all you need to do is basically click on suggestions. And so the next one will be web design, web developer, software development, programming language. And, you know, you might be thinking, okay, it's going to convert from this ad set or from this interest or from this behavior, but you will be surprised, right? Marketing is all about testing. There's no guarantees. It's all about testing. And so I never make any assumptions, right? I'm always testing. I'm, I'm never guessing. I'm basically just going to test 10 ad sets. I have some campaigns that have 20 ad sets. Some have 30 ad sets one interest per ad set obviously but you know i'm never i'm never guessing right i'm always i need to test everything and i never assume anything because that's a really kind of bad way to kind of uh, do marketing is by assuming this is going to work no you just test you just create multiple campaigns multiple interests multiple ad sets and that's how you test and that is how you do it right i cannot i'm not going to be publishing this campaign simply because i don't have the right website right but that's what you're going to be doing is you need a simple website, like I explained in this diagram, because FB ad website, top 10 mattresses, uh, this is going to be top 10 programming websites. It's, it, this is called commercial content because it's, com it's comparing different services, right? It's not, it's not just how to do something, how to code. It's actually comparing different solutions. And, or you can create kind of, an, kind of an email funnel, but I recommend to start off with something like this because this is more complicated, right? This is, the second one is basically the first one plus more, plus extra stuff. And this one is basically, it's a lot more, um, it's a lot simpler, right? And so this is kind of how I would do it, right? This is how I would run Facebook ads. The most important thing is the offer. Start with a high quality offer, a legit offer. Don't do survey sweepstakes. At least don't do them using this method. There are a lot of other methods for that kind of uh, techniques. But for this specific example, this is what I recommend. Start with a high quality offer. Use this uh, method, use this tactic, and you're not going to have any problems promoting on Facebook ads. All right, guys. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And if you want to see future videos such as this one, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and I will see you in the next video.